In today's episode, it's all about avoiding disaster. I'm going to take you through the steps that you need to create what we call a break glass account for Microsoft Entra ID and Microsoft 365. So if you're ready to learn, let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Robopack, the trend-setting solution for Intune packaging and third-party patch management. And it's free for SMBs and NGOs. Visit them today at robopack.com. Hi everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you. And I really do appreciate you dropping by. As you can see, I'm in a classroom today. I'm teaching here in Oslo in Norway. Today, I thought I'd take on the topic of creating a break glass account for administrators in Microsoft 365 and Entra ID. This is absolutely critical uh, in a incident or as a part of incident response, I should say. What are the steps involved and how does it work? I'm gonna take you through all of that. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we'd love to have you on board. So bump that subscribe button and ring that bell and come and join my learning community. I've just hit 160,000 subscribers. I gotta say thank you so much to each and every one of you. I really do appreciate it. Let's see if we can make it 180,000. Uh, okay, so I need your help. Uh, to do that. Now, questions and comments, as always, get those down below, and as always, I'll do my best for you. So, I think without any further ado, let's jump in and have a look at how to create and manage a break glass account. And this is a full demo, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to create what we call a break glass account in Microsoft 365 and Enter ID. I'm going to come into all users and I'm going to create a new user. Now, just for your own records, this can either be an internal member user or it can be a guest user. And the reason being is we're not going to assign any licenses to this user account. So I'm simply going to go in, I'm going to create a new user and a good rule of thumb is give it a sensible name. Don't call it break glass account because hackers will do that. Give it some kind of obscure name that will have meaning to you. For the purpose of my demo, <laughs> I'm going to call it BGA and you can see it's putting it at my, on Microsoft.com tenant. This is just a demo tenant. Just a quick mention that if you've got your own domain name and it comes up as BGA at mycompany.com, I would strongly suggest that you actually use this tenant dot on Microsoft.com domain name. Why? Because the chances are hackers typically won't know this name because they'll try the at mycompany.com domain name first of all. So again, what do you want to call the user? Call BGA, whatever you want to call it. And when it comes to the password, it will say, do you want me to auto-generate a password? You don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a really long password and it must contain at, you know, different characters and also numbers and capital letters, lower letters. And remember, it is case sensitive. So I'm a big Star Trek fan. Again, I wouldn't potentially, this is just for demo purposes, you might, if there's a, a whole team of admins within your organization, I would maybe ask them to choose random words. So a collection of random words, for example, would make a good kind of break glass account. So typically with the break glass account, um, you can see it's saying, do you want me to derive the nickname and the, the password? I'm just going to paste this password in here. You can see and uh, so I'm happy. Next, I can go to properties. I could fill all this data in here if I want to. One thing that you will probably want to do is set a usage location. So this particular tenant is based in the US. So I'm just gonna base my tenant there. I'm now gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create this uh, particular account. So just gonna quickly refresh this uh, page and I'm gonna come down into the BGA account here. And you can see uh, I've not assigned any licenses to this account because he's an admin. He doesn't necessarily need those licenses. And also save your licenses for users who will actually use them, of course. So the next thing is I'm going to come down to assigned roles. And of course, what we want to do is we want to assign um, a role for this particular user. So you can specify uh, which role you want to bring in. So again, here, I'm just going to type in, let's say, the global admin, just type in global. I'm going to assign the global administrator. So I'm going to say yes. 
So next. Um, of course, the other way that you can also do this is you could do this in Microsoft 365 as well. So if I just pop over into Microsoft 365, again, I've got users, I've got active users, and it, pretty much you'll see I've got the same user here. So just, again, refresh this page here. It's really whichever um, portal you are familiar with or which, whichever one you're comfortable with. Again, licenses, we don't need to bring any licenses in, but again, with uh, users, I can simply go into the roles and again, I can add the roles in here if I want to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make um, him a global administrator. A good idea is to also make the user, for example, security. And if you don't see the, the uh, option that you're looking for, you can scroll down, of course, um, a good tip, by the way, is I'm going to make mine also a compliance administrator as well uh, and also a security admin. But again, if you don't do that here, it doesn't really matter because you can actually go ahead and do that later. So um, as I said, you've got some uh, specific roles in here. Some roles are, of course, more important than others. But as long as you've got the uh, security admin and also the um, identity administrator uh, in there as well those are the those are the kind of the main ones here so again you can scroll up and if there's any additional roles that you want the user to have of course you can add them in I'm just going to go with the global admin at the moment and I'm going to save those changes so the next thing that I want to do obviously uh, is now that we've created that user account we've made the user a member of that global admin role the next thing is we want to exclude them from potentially any troubling uh, conditional access roles. So for this, I'm gonna come back into Enter ID. I'm gonna scroll down, and we're gonna come into the Protection tab, and again, into Conditional Access. So Conditional Access at the moment, this, as I said, is a demo tenant, and this particular tenant, as you can see, has uh, a couple of policies. So we have the multi-factor authentication for Microsoft partners and vendors. And pretty soon, you're going to have an enforced multi-factor authentication policy for all users as well. But of course, what we're creating here is a break glass account. So in an emergency scenario, if an administrator leaves or if something happens, you can't get back into the account and you don't have multi-factor authentication, then this will basically save your day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my users here, and as you can see, we have an include and exclude. Now, one big tip that I would like to give you is never use this. Never use all users, because if you use all users, it can potentially, as you can see, um, admin accounts. But again, be very careful of the risk with that. So uh, what I would typically do is again Microsoft here you can see certain admin roles directory synchronized accounts this could potentially be a weak spot or a sweet spot for hackers depending on your perspective um, but you should never add admin roles in here um, other than that directory role in terms of users and groups what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to say yeah I want to bring in my user so um, for this demo, of course, I've got my BGA account here. So again, I can just copy this and as if by magic, my user appears and I'm going to select this. And of course, I want to exclude him. So I want to exclude this particular account from this multi-factor authentication. So as I say, you should make the user's password either a passphrase or a series of random words with com you know complex characters in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to log in as my uh, BGA account, and let's just take a look at what that looks like. So I'm logging in now as the BGA admin account, first time login, and I'm just going to paste in my password. Now at this point, MFA would normally kick in and ask me to register for multi-factor authentication. So what is happening is I'm being prompted to change my password. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add uh, some initial characters 
uh, on the end of it and I'm now going to sign in and as you can see this is normally where MFA would kick in so the first time that you log in you might get an error like this this is fine it just takes a few moments and keep trying and eventually this will clear and you'll be able to log in okay so logging in of course I'm just going to paste my username in and just click on open and now once we've done that I'm just going to enter my password and now you'll see sure enough that there is no MFA and indeed everything is now working so yeah I'm just going to say no to this I'm going to log in and as you can see I'm now into Microsoft 365 of course at this point it's saying you don't have any apps but again I'm not too bothered about this because I don't need any apps because of course all I'm doing is I'm just going in and I'm just doing some administration so that's uh, that's fine so I'm what I'm going to do is you can see the admin icon just over here I'm just going to click onto that and as you can see I've now got full access to manage all of my features in Microsoft 365 without having to worry about multi-factor authentication and as I said it's a good idea to maybe have a couple of those accounts just for additional security so there you go uh, an emergency break last account what did you think I hope that you got a lot out of that video and of course if you've got any questions and comments make sure that you get those down below that's it for this time I really appreciate it if you enjoyed the video give me a big thumbs up and hit that like button and hit the subscribe button as well and I'll see you next time thanks for joining me